e ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā maunga, e ngā awa awa, e ngā pātaka o ngā taonga tuku iho. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. In my language, I greet you, the people of this land, and the visitors to this land. I greet your land itself, I greet your waterways, and I greet your treasures, your ancestors. I greet you three times. Do you know what te kotahitanga means? Te kotahitanga means unity of purpose. Te kotahitanga is the name of an education reform study in New Zealand that aims to raise the achievement of the Indigenous Māori students. It's working in New Zealand secondary schools in partnership with the Ministry of Education. My name is Mere Berryman. Professor Russell Bishop and I began Te Kotahitanga over 13 years ago under the cultural mantle of these elders. This painting by Robin Kahukiwa is called The Choice. In order to succeed, in order to play the game, the young woman in this painting is faced with a choice, to mask her cultural identity or not. I wonder when this choice to mask one's identity begins. My own experience suggests that this begins as soon as we start formal education. For many Indigenous people, it continues then in an ongoing spiral of education, then economic failure. My own granddaughter, Karamia, exemplifies this choice. She lives 10 minutes away from us, and from the time she was born, it was normal that she would spend at least every weekend in our house. At five, she began school ready to take on the world. It was not long before these beliefs were challenged. Its beginning seems quite innocuous, really. She was asked to draw a picture of her family by her teacher. And she brought it home proud of the work that she had done. In her picture was her dad, her mum, who was pregnant at the time. You could see her sibling inside, and Karamea herself. And of course, as a nanny, I waxed lyrical about her creative ability. However, I did have a question. And when I asked it, her face dropped. Her enthusiasm stopped. And she looked with downcast eyes at me and she said, Family is what lives in your house. So, how do schools become places where children's identities as learners is nurtured and able to flourish? How do we, as educators, maintain spaces of teaching and learning that keep the lights shining in our children's eyes? Or will we continue to leave them pondering why their teachers continue to define who they are? Or as Karamea herself observed, ask questions when they already know the answers to. In order to succeed at school, too many students, just like my granddaughter, feel that they have to leave their culture at home. What to do about this was Russell and my challenge. And I have to say that if you're a teacher, so are Russell and I. That's our background. So I just want to put that out there. Our journey began in 2001. We asked groups of Māori students what would engage them with learning. We asked their families, we asked some of their teachers and their school principals to consider the same theme. 
when we analysed these conversations, we found that people were coming from three main perspectives. One perspective related to the relationships and the interactions that went on inside classrooms. One perspective related to the structure of schools and the education system. And the third structure was largely to do with deficit beliefs about Māori children and their homes. Māori students believed, however, that the solutions lay in how they interacted and related with their teachers in their classrooms. Families and school principals agreed with this. However, the majority of teachers told us that until Māori themselves were somehow fixed up, there was very little else that they could do. While here was a clear case of talking past each other, the students themselves provided the solutions, and it is upon these solutions that Te Kotahitanga has been built. What Māori students told us became central to classroom learning, and with professional development, teachers like Anjali, the teacher in this photograph, went from feeling extremely stressed to actually remembering why they went into teaching and feeling re-energised and absolutely enjoying teaching again. Rather than dominate from the front of the class, these teachers work to activate all of the brains in the classroom. This requires them to develop relationships with, with students that show that they care for them and high, have high expectations of them as achievers. By creating context for learning where students can use their own prior knowledge and experiences as the basis for co-constructing new learning, teachers can make a difference. These teachers listen to students, they talk with them about their learning, and together they seek solutions and co-construct new knowledge, rather than merely transmit it. As a result of her students' nomination, Anjali was recognised nationally for her effective teaching. While not all of our teachers get national recognition, we have lots of positive stories about the differences that te kotahi teachers can and have made for their students, and you'll be able to find some of those on our website if you're interested. Just as new knowledge is co-constructed within the classroom, evidence-based solutions for raising student achievement begins to be co-constructed across all levels of the school. Groups of teachers use evidence of student achievement to ask what more they can do to lift achievement. Senior leaders use school-wide data to also critically focus on where they too can make the difference. Their transformative leadership role brings cohesion across the school to promote achievement lift and sustainability. So what difference have we made for Māori students? I guess that's the question. Where national qualifications are compared with phase five te kotahitanga schools, and if you look in the graph, phase five te kotahitanga schools are shown with the green line, and a comparable group of non te kotahitanga schools are shown with the red line. The 17 phase five schools began in the second half of 2009. Although they be began their journey below the achievement levels of the comparison group schools, after three and a half years of te kotahitanga, these schools showed statistically significant improvements. And this is shown for the year 11 students in this graph. It's shown for the year 12 students in this graph. And it's also shown for the year 13 students. The same trend is evident across all groups. When we talk about the Māori students in the specific schools that we're working in, they're all at the lower socioeconomic scale. It just seems that more Māori live in those areas. Well, up until now they do. Talking about how teachers 
now view Māori student underachievement. Students in this school said, it's not like they blame you. They blame themselves. They take it personally that it's their fault. They think they are teaching you badly. We've got the principal of this school with us today. The vision of the school that these students attend is student success is the only option. In these schools, the power to define education success is now shared with students. Things have changed for the better, and they certainly needed to. Thank you. Thank you.